Hi, Kieran Stone here with a Photoshop tutorial. What I've got for you today is an advanced yet simple way of adding targeted contrast to your image. Um, what I've got here is a pre-sunrise shot from Terrigal on the central coast of New South Wales. Um, there's some interesting rocks here and some reflected sky in the pooling water, but Overall, it's kind of a flat, lifeless image. It's had some simple adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw, but we're just going to bring it in here to Photoshop just to add a bit more contrast and see how that brings more life to the image. So the simplest way to add a bit more contrast to an image is to add a curves adjustment layer. So either selecting curves up here or adding an adjustment layer through curves here. And the easiest way is to just add a S-curve to the image. Just quite simply doing that. And all this is doing is saying to Photoshop to make those areas of shadow darker and the highlights a bit lighter and separating the values between those two, which adds more contrast to the image, as you can see here. So already that's done an okay job just to bring a bit more interest to the image, but we can do a bit better than that. So what we're going to do is separate the image into three different areas, one of them being the shadows, another being the midtones, and another the highlights. So these three areas of our histogram here. So our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. Now to do this we need to create some masks which will selectively target those areas. So to do this we'll go into our channels panel here and we're going to make a selection from our RGB channel here. And to do this you need to hold down control or command with a Mac and you can see the little um, selection uh, coming up on your cursor there and if you click on that and have a look at your image it's created a marching a few marching ants around what looks like the highlighted areas and if we click our little mask down here it will add oops added too many there let me just delete one it will add a pretty much black and white image of um, where our shadows are being the darker areas and our highlights being the lighter areas and our midtones being the grey in between. So I'll just press Control D to get rid of these marching ants just so you can see it a bit more clearly. And this is basically a mask now can be used as a mask for our highlights where the white areas here will be the lightest parts and the darker areas will be our shadows where it will the mask will block out any changes we make. So to make our other two masks, what we're going to do is do the same thing again from our RGB channel. Hold down control and click and create another mask. And then control D just to get rid of those marching ants. And then we're going to invert this by pressing Control i to invert or going up to Image Adjustments and Invert. Now what we've done here is effectively create another image we can use as a mask where all this white area is going to be our shadows and the black regions here are the highlights where any adjustments we make are not going to be affected in these areas. Now we just need to make one more mask, which will be our midtone section. So the way we do that is by selecting the whole image, which is Control A. You can see the marching ants around the whole thing. And now if we hold down Control and Alt, you'll be able to minus the highlights and the shadows from this selection. So we'll just click on the highlights there, and then the shadows. 
and this little warning will come up saying that less than 50% of the pixels are selected or no pixels more than 50% are selected and it's just going to say that there's not going to be any marching ants here um, because any pixel is less than 50% um, of the image but if we click our little mask down here we'll be able to see that the darker areas are now being taken out and same with these highlights up through here and what we're left with is a very subtle selection of the mid-tone region. So now we've got three different areas, our highlights, our shadows and our mid-tones. So to create a mask for this we're just going to hold down control again and click on our highlights, go back to our layers and I'm just going to create a group by this little button down here and then our mask button and that will apply a mask to this whole group. And The reason I like to make a group with this mask is that I can add more adjustments to this later to just affect the highlights rather than just creating a mask around a curves adjustment layer. Then we'll go back into our channels, select our shadows, and again holding down control to make a selection. Go back to layers, create a new group, and apply the mask. So now we've got a group masked just to our shadows. And we'll do one more for our midtones. So hold down control, warning will come up again saying that no pixels are more than 50% selected. So we won't have any marching ads, but again, create a group, apply the mask, and now we have three different groups. So we can add different adjustments to our highlights, our shadows, and our midtones. So let's start with our highlights. So with this group selected, I can go up here and add a curves adjustment layer, and if I drag this down, you'll see that none of my shadows through here are being affected and only the bright highlights in the sky are being affected by this adjustment layer here. So what I want to do is just bring down some of those highlights but keep some more at the same value just up there. So are very bright, so I want to keep as they are, but just drag that down. And what that'll do is add a bit more contrast just to that highlighted region there. And you can see it also brings in a bit more color into that sunrise area there. If you don't like the too much color there, you can go to your blending mode here where it says normal and change that to luminosity. And what that'll do is just affect the luminosity but not the color. But I like the addition of color in there. It hasn't gone too far, so I'm just going to leave that there. And you can see here that there's another mask created on this curves adjustment layer. And we've actually affected some of this area down here where it's a bit brighter, but I don't want to affect that area, so what I'm going to do is with the mask here selected, I'm going to select the gradient tool or G, and it's giving me a little ding there, that's okay. Um, and then holding down shift to make a straight gradient from white to black from black to white. I'm just going to remove the effect from here. So I've got two masks applied and it's not going to affect my rocks down here. <coughs> and I can always just filter that or mask that out a bit more until I find where it looks good. And so that's just affecting the highlights there. Now if we go to our shadows, again select a curves adjustment layer and we're just going to 
bring down our shadows a little bit but I want to bring a bit more detail to those rocks so I'm just gonna lift that and create a bit of contrast just through this area here so as you can see it's not really affecting these highlights it'll affect the clouds a bit but if I don't like how it affects them I can always add another gradient to this mask to get rid of that though I'm kind of happy with how that's looking there in the sky as well so I'm just leave that there for the moment and move on to our midtones so our midtones again with a curves adjustment layer just gonna bring down the shadows and bring up the highlights and because it's not really affecting too much of the image you can create quite a large S-curve and it won't make too much of a difference but it'll still just add a bit more contrast and sort of balance out those two regions a bit more so what have we got here we've got our contrast added to our midtones our shadows and our highlights so if we group those three groups together by just holding down shift and selecting all of them and then still while holding shift pressing the group button again and that'll just make a whole new group for all these other groups um, just to make it simple so I can turn off that selection and on again so just having a look at this image here we've gone from a rather flat lifeless image to something with a lot of contrast and color and the difference between just adding one curves adjustment layer to selectively adding contrast and you can already see that that's added a lot more to this image rather than just this rather flat image here okay that's about it um, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time